you asked for more NHL workouts and I heard you. This is the third part in this series where I walk you through full pro hockey strength sessions. You'll get to peek behind the curtains how elite hockey athletes prepare for the game during the summer. If you haven't watched the two previous clips, check out the card somewhere up here to get you up to date. What you're going to see next is an upper body workout in the off-season training plan of Pittsburgh Penguins forward Gasper Bjorklis. This session takes place in what I call off-season phase 3. Coming off heavy sets of fire reps on the main list in phase 2, where we pushed up your maximal strength, this one is a higher volume phase. The goal is to gain muscle, we're building your body armor, we're getting you jacked. Now that we're in the second half of the off-season, we kick off this session with an explosive movement. Any type of med ball throw is always a great option for improving upper body power in athletes. This here is the rotational med ball floor slam. Excellent choice for rotational sports like hockey where you have to generate a ton of power through your hips and core into your arms as you unleash a lethal wrist or slap shot. We want 100% effort here. Think of slamming the ball through the floor all the way to China. Five sets of five reps on each side, alternating, so 10 reps total per set. Rest 75 seconds between each set. Once you have completed all five sets, continue into a chin-up and push-up superset. Since we're in a high volume phase where building muscle is a priority, we want longer time on attention to help do just that. You are going to train in a way that makes your muscles burn. On chin-ups, pull yourself up and then lower your body in 5 seconds. So no swinging, controlled movements only. You really have to resist gravity here on the way down. Squeeze your biceps, squeeze your lats, don't let gravity take over. As always, once body weight becomes too easy, wrap some plates around your waist and off you go. Complete 8 reps, rest 90 seconds, then move on to parallel push-ups for as many good reps as you can. If you don't have any parallels at hand, but regular push-ups feel too easy, you can use gymnastic rings or place your feet on a bench to make it harder. We're shooting for 15 to 25 quality reps on the first set. If you can do 30 or more comfortably with textbook form, then you have to find a more challenging variation. That's where the parallels come in. Since the range of motion is larger than when your hands are on the floor, it's harder and you'll get amazing chest bumps here. 90 second break again, then go back to the chin-ups, four sets on each exercise. After this superset, we wrap things up with a tricep. Since you just performed a vertical pull and horizontal push, we're going to include a horizontal pull and vertical push plus one exercise for the abs. Start with double landmine presses. I dig this exercise a lot. Thanks to the neutral grip and diagonal bar path, even athletes who complain about shoulder pain on regular barbell overhead presses can do these without issues. If you don't have two landmine stations available, just do one arm at a time or replace it with Viking presses. Pay attention to core control. You don't want your lower back to hyperextend during your set. 8 to 12 reps, take 60 seconds off before one arm dumbbell rolls. Just like with the chin ups, we're using a 5 second eccentric to lengthen the time under tension and to fry your lats and upper back muscles. 8 reps, 60 seconds off again, and finish the tricep with slider jackknives. 8 to 12 reps. If regular reps don't pose a challenge, taking a few steps between each rep or using a resistance band looped around your ankles will make your abdominals burn. Keep your hips straight, don't let them sag. Rest for 60 seconds, then start over with the double landmine presses. Four sets of each of the three exercises and you, my friend, are done. While this workout may not look that brutal on paper, believe me, once you're moving some decent weights around, the short rest periods, coupled with a long time under tension, whether that's through slow eccentrics or high reps, will have you huffing and puffing at the end of the session. It not only helps you build strength and muscle, but also drives up your general fitness levels. As for the bigger picture stuff, this workout takes place in week 4, the last week in this training cycle. You would not start with this much volume in week 1 because you will be trashed. So 3 sets per exercise and on some of them you would go a bit lower in reps. Week by week, volume increases until you're ready to take on the workout you just saw. Speaking of training cycles and program design for maximal athletic performance, you'll want to head over to nextlevelhockeytraining.com 
right now to access my full off-season programs dozens of D1 and pro hockey players use with overwhelming success to prepare for the best season of their career. And if you're wondering, yes, they work equally well for men's rec league or beer league players. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this NHL workout, then smash that like button. If we get at least 20 likes in the next 24 hours, I'll make a follow-up video with Casper's Phase 4 off-season workout. It's a lower body max strength session that really builds a strong set of legs like nothing else. You're gonna love it. So tap that like button. See you soon.